What's up, Calic Gang? Okay, so we got this uh, bicycle problem, and at face value, it looks super complicated. Like, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of circles. Um, but I'm going to try to simplify it as much as possible, uh, just to keep it simple. Okay, so let's, let's, see. let's try to draw a, a picture that's pretty simple. Okay, so we have this tire, and then this sprocket, and this radius is what we're trying to find. And it says we have to have this tangential velocity of four meters a second. And then it gives you that this radius is 0 0.31 meters. And then you have this front tire with its rocket. This radius is 0 0.13 meters. And this angular velocity is equal to 3.78 radians a second. And it wants to find, you know, what's this radius got to be for, you know, this system or whatever work. Okay, so what do we know about this bicycle, right? Well, these tires might be different sizes. Um, so we don't know, like their angular velocity, like imagine if you have a bike, like a, what's one of those bikes called with like the big tire in the front? This angular velocity is going to be way bigger than this angular velocity, right? This is going to keep turning really fast and this is going to turn pretty slow. So we don't think that their angular velocities are equal to each other, but what we know is their tangential velocities are equal to each other. If you had a bicycle with the front tire and the back tire that went different speeds, you kind of just have tires that like drift apart, right? It wouldn't work. That's not good. So we know that uh, the velocity uh, is equal to you know four on this tire too. So we can say you know the velocity of back is equal to the velocity of front, and we also know that velocity is equal to the radius times the tangential velocity. So we have tangential velocity on this tire, and we have its radius. We want to find this radius, and we can find this tangential velocity by using this formula. So here, tangential velocity, by rearranging this, it's going to be velocity over radius. So we have its tangential velocity, and we have this radius. And we know that this angular velocity is going to be the same as this angular velocity, because they're in the same system, right? If you have this little, like a little sprocket and this big tire, they're going to still turn at the same radians per second. So we can say that. So we know that this, for the little sprocket, is going to be 4 divided by 0 0.31, which is equal to, I don't have it, where's my paper, here it is, 12.9. Okay, so then we can go back to this formula. So you can say the radius of the uh, back, or sprocket, times the angular accelerator velocity of the back sprocket, is equal to the radius of the front, uh, angular acceleration of the front. So radius of the back is what we're trying to find. And then, so if you divide it by that, you're gonna get radius front, velocity front, or velocity of the back. Makes sense. Okay, so this, plug it in your numbers. The front uh, radius, 0 0.13, um, is equal, uh, multiplied by its tangential velocity, 3.78, that's a three. And then divide that by, the one we just found, which is 12.9. You get that, you're gonna get 0 0.038 meters. Did I get that right? One, two, it's equal to 3.8 centimeters. I think that's right. It's a little sprocket in the back. So yeah, that's how you solve this kind of problem. Uh, yeah. So yeah, good luck on your uh, physics homework, guys. Um, just kind of like try to think about things logically. Be like, hmm, the tangential velocities have got to be the same, otherwise the tires would come apart. The, uh, the uh, angular velocities have got to be the same on this tire, because otherwise they'd be spinning at like different speeds. It'd be weird. So if you can just kind of like try to visualize that stuff, um, this stuff will become easy to you. So yeah, good luck on your uh, physics homework, guys. I'll see you next time.